and welcome to Math World. Today's topic is square roots. Now this starts from the shape, the square. And the concept is that if a square has side lengths of four, because a square always has all the same side lengths, that you can find the area of a square by doing the side length times another side length. So four times four would be 16. That means that four squared, and we show the square with a little exponent of a two above it, means four times four, because that's how you find the area of all squares, by multiplying a side by itself. So the little square symbol tells us to multiply a number by itself. So four squared is four times four, or 16. So that's what a square is. Now a square root, is kind of going backward, saying, well, a square root, the root symbol looks like this. And if we put a 16 inside of it, saying, what is the square root of 16? Meaning, what number will give us, uh, what number times itself will give us 16? Well, that would be 4, because 4 times 4 equals 16. So the square root of 16 is 4. It's kind of like going backwards and going forth. So that's what we're going to be working on. Taking a number and squaring it to multiply it by itself, or to take a square root of a number to figure out what number multiplied by itself gives you the square root number. All right, so some of them are easy. Let's see if you can get some on your own. What do you think the square root of 25 is? What number times itself will give you 25? If you said 5, you're correct. 5 times 5 makes 25. All right, let's try another one. How about the square root of 81? It's a bigger number, but if you think about your times tables, which number multiplied by itself gives you 81? That's going to be 9. 9 times itself gives you 81. So that's doing square roots. Now, it's kind of simple when you have nice, even whole numbers, like 9 times 9 makes 81, 5 times 5 makes 25. But what if we get a number that's not a whole number? For example, what if we try something like 3.5 times itself, squaring it? So I'm saying 3.5 times 3.5. Well, that's not going to be a nice, easy number. In fact, I'm going to use my calculator to even see what that makes. Not uh, 3.5 times 3.5 makes 12.25. So 12.25 is our answer here, meaning 3.5 squared gives us 12.25. So if we were to go backwards, we could say the square root of 12.25, what number times itself will give you this? Well, we already know we did 3.5. So the square root of 12.25 is 3.5. Now, I don't expect you to know that off the top of your head. No one really has that times table memorized. So what we can do, though, in this unit is estimate. We're going to kind of guess what do we think it's close to. And so let's try another one. Let's say the square root of 15. So I'm going to not know exactly what times itself gives us 15. I just don't know what that is. Um, I have no idea what number times itself will make 15. But what I do know is that the square root of 16 is 4. So the square root of 15 must be smaller than 4, right? The square root of 16 is 4, so the square root of 15 must be something smaller than 4, maybe like 3.8, 3.9, something like that. And that's what we're going to guess. And that's okay. Now, um, could it be 2 point something? Could this be 2.9? Would that work? Well. Not really, because I can use another perfect square that I do know. A perfect square 
is something that we do know. I'm going to put one more in here. What's another perfect square we know? We know that the square root of 9 is 3. We know that 3 times 3 makes 9. And that means that the square root of 15 must be bigger than the square root of 9. So our answer must be bigger than 3. So it cannot be that 2.9. Well, we've narrowed it down pretty well. We know that the square root of 15 must be somewhere between the square root of 16 and the square root of 9, or somewhere between 4 and 3. So let's see, do we think it's closer to 4 or closer to 3? Is it closer to 3 or closer to 4? Hmm. Well, the square root of 15 is really close to the square root of 16. It's not really that close to the square root of 9. 15 is close to 16. So I'm going to say the answer is going to be closer to 4, and but not quite 4. So I think my final answer is 3.9. 3.8, 3.9, it's just a guess. Somewhere closer to 4, though. And we can even take our calculator and see how close we got. 3.9 times 3.9. Hey, it's 15.2, so we're pretty close. The square root of 15 is about 3.9. And that would be our answer. So we can say the square root of 15 is about 3.9. And we can do this for any other square root that we want to guess. If I want to guess what's the square root of 70, uh, I don't know. I don't know what number makes up, what times itself makes 70. I do know that it's smaller than 9, though. And what's the, what is uh, 8 squared? Uh, that would probably be, what, square root of 64? And 70 is bigger than 64. So the square root of 70 is between the square root of 64 and the square root of 81. So this must be between 8 and 9. Hmm, so it's going to be 8 point something. And what do you think? 70 is closer to 70 is closer to 64 than it is to 81. So it's probably 8.4 or something. It's about halfway between, but a little closer to 64. So there would be another estimate. And that's what we're going to be doing here. Just taking kind of guesses based on what we know about perfect squares to make estimates about non-perfect squares. And that's it, and I'll see you in class. Hey, what's up class? This is Mr. Bigsby with a hat, and I've got a challenge problem for you. All right, what is the square root of 130? So it's a non-perfect square, you're gonna have to estimate. All right, leave your answer in the comments. Later. Now for a word from our sponsor, Paper Cut Games. Today we're going to review a game called Brave Rats. This is one of my favorite games because it's an easy to carry around two player game that is easy to learn. Basically each person is going to get the same exact hand of seven cards and are these little rats. And now the goal of the game is each person is going to secretly choose one of their rats to play down and then once they're both face down you flip them over and see who wins. And in most cases, the higher number, oop, the higher number will beat the lower number. But there are some special rules, such as the three, the assassin actually wins if it's the lower card, or the general will give your next card a plus two. So each card kind of has like a little bit of a, a little bit of a flavor to it. And of course, the best flavor of the game is the prince versus the princess. The prince is a seven, which is the best card. And the princess is a one. However, the prince is in love with the princess. So if the princess gets played, the princess automatically beats the prince and wins the entire round. Otherwise, you play until usually people get four victories, and that's the game. And then play again. It takes about two minutes to play, so that's why it's really fun and quick. Go ahead and check out Brave Rats. I'm Mr. Bigsby, and I approve this message.